And welcome to day 14 of the Atlantic Ocean season, day 31 in the Eastern Pacific, and of course, um, day whatever it may be in the Western Pacific where the season is year round. And that's where the action is at the moment. Um, two areas of interest Ex uh, extra tropical storm, you could call that as well, Jiagi, um, which dissipated uh, yesterday, is still going near the Japanese coast. And we also have Invest 99W, which, uh, which now has a medium chance of development in the South China Sea, may develop into a weak tropical storm perhaps before um, striking land, possibly in China or Vietnam over the next few days. And you can see extra tropical storm Yagi there as well, um, near the Jap Japanese coastline, causing some rain for that area at the moment, to the north of the storm, more on that in a moment. Uh, in the Atlantic, uh, it's still quiet at the moment, no new storms forming, uh, not even any um, snippets of hope for storm development over the next few days. Um, the uh, uh, the cloud cover you can see there's very little of it over the whole ocean so it's fairly quiet here and in the Indian Ocean things are relatively quiet as well just um, a few disturbances in the um, Bay of Bengal but nothing that seems to be um, of concern in terms of development over the next few days um, so all is quiet elsewhere apart from the Western Pacific at the moment let's look at the sea surface temperatures and warm waters remaining off the uh, Mexican coastline in the eastern Pacific, 30 degrees or more near the coast there. In the Atlantic, the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico, mainly 28 degrees or above, uh, all of it, 26 or above there, which is obviously the threat of tropical cyclone formation. Uh, the Northern Bay of Bengal again, staying warm, 30 degrees or more. The South China Sea and the Philippine Sea as well, warm here, 30 degrees or more. And that's where 99W is at the moment as well, um, perhaps taking advantage of those waters at the moment. So this is what's left of Yagi near the Japanese coast, uh, wind speeds 25 miles per hour, pressure of 1,007 millibars and is expected to remain almost stationary over the next few days which may cause uh, quite a bit of rainfall for some of the uh, Japanese coastline. There is a rain advisory in effect only for one location now um, but in the next 48 hours the storm is expected to continue uh, to weaken if it hasn't weakened enough already and eventually there will be virtually nothing left of it um, by the 48 hour period of this storm, that's what's anticipated. Uh, the current rain advisory is in effect for parts of Kanagawa Prefecture in Japan. All other warnings that we had on yesterday have been lifted, uh, so as far as Japan's concerned, uh, not really anything in terms of um, uh, of any concerns for all areas except the Kanagawa Pre Prefecture where rain advisories continue. Let's take a look at things on the satellite image with then you can see Yagi it's moved a little bit over to the west in the past day or so and it's sort of meandering around uh, perhaps executing a bit of a loop as well you can see a bit of southward movement towards the end there but you can see there's still lots of clouds associated with it it isn't um, it isn't completely bad there is still some rain being produced from the storm and that's a lot of that's over Japan at the moment, so rain falling here. And we have Invest 99W as well, which has moved north since the last update in the North China, uh, North South China Sea. Um, you can see the island of Hainan there on the left, uh, and the mainland China up to the uh, northeast, uh, northwest as well of that image. Uh, you can see the storm still trying to develop a medium chance on that one at the moment as it continues north, perhaps northwest. Now let's take a look at the uh, model runs then, the CMC at the moment. You can see at the very end there perhaps a little bit of a system for in the eastern Pacific uh, that might be of interest uh, so definitely to see if that if it remains consistent with that one that model one there uh, I don't see any of the others picking up on it as far as I know the ECMWF doesn't really pick up on much just a few uh, just a little bit of disturbance perhaps in the eastern Pacific but certainly nothing developing uh, and certainly nothing developing in the Atlantic either the GFS fairly quiet here as well um, high pressure very dominant out in the open Atlantic waters into the Gulf of Mexico at the moment and that's expected to continue for the few days yet um, and it doesn't seem as if any systems will form. Navgem, what we can see of it, um, doesn't really develop much either just a bit of low pressure hanging around the eastern Pacific towards the end of that loop but nothing uh, significant at least as of yet. So let's take a look at the latest predictor season scores for June the 14th 2013, the Force 13 competition where you can submit your own uh, season totals for the Northern Hemisphere. In first place at the moment is Ken with 108 points, Typhoon Bopu in second with 101 and Hoka Melissa 20 with 99 points. But don't let those put you off because um, there's still plenty of time to submit your prediction and these ones here at the top are likely to uh, slide down the leaderboard as more storms form because at the moment uh, they're probably most accurate by predicting lots of zeros in their prediction as did many on that top 10 there. Um, though maybe some of them chose just to do uh, one basin which is perfectly fine but you probably won't win overall 
Uh, and what happened on this day on June the 14th, then 1976, Hurricane Annette dissipating in the eastern Pacific. In 1984, Tropical Depression 1 making landfall near Jacksonville Beach, Florida before dissipating. In 1991, Blanca forming in the eastern Pacific. In 2006, Alberto making landfall near Adams Beach, Florida resulting in two fatalities and a quarter of a million dollars in damages. Lynn forming in the western Pacific and Carlotta forming in the eastern Pacific last year, 2012, on this day. Uh, on June the 14th. And don't forget, you can track any storm that forms on the Force 13 website, force13.com forward slash stormtracking.html. We cover the whole world. You can search basin by basin, um, which bit interests you the most in terms of active storms. Obviously, when there isn't an active storm, not much information going out there, but you can still see the latest satellite imagery for any potential systems forming uh, on the website. Um, and, of course, any active systems will have all the information, warning information, um, and the forecast track and anything else of interest um, on the website updated as much as I possibly can uh, which sometimes isn't very uh, timely but usually I try to keep up to date but the bulletins keep you up to date as it is anyway uh, daily at the worst um, and you can check out the social pages YouTube, Facebook and Twitter don't forget to show your support by subscribing, liking, favouriting, uh, following and whatever else that you may uh, be able to do to um, uh, to show your support for Force 13. Thank you very much. I much appreciate it. The next bulletin's coming up just at the same time tomorrow, around midnight UTC on uh, Saturday, Saturday the 15th of June uh, 2013. Don't miss it.